Hey everyone, this is going to be my course overview slash review of CSE 6242, which is the Georgia Tech course titled Data and Visual Analytics. This course is required for students that are doing the online masters in analytics at Georgia Tech. And if you're doing the online masters in computer science with a machine learning specialization, this is one of the machine learning electives that you can take. So that's why I took the course. Um, before we get too far into the video, I just wanna say I did do a mid-semester check-in, which I did a little bit halfway, a little bit over halfway through the semester. And I talked about the first few assignments and my initial reaction and assumptions going into the course or motivations for taking the course. So definitely check that out if you haven't. In this video, I'm gonna kinda of give a broader overview and I'll go quickly through the beginning part of the class since I already covered most of that in the other video that I just referred to. As you would expect, based on the course title, this class is centered around the visualization and analysis of data. But I do wanna say that it really feels like it's more focused on the tools and technologies that you can leverage to do the analysis and visualization rather than focusing on doing the analysis and visualization, if that makes sense. Basically what I'm saying is it goes for breadth and not depth and exposes you to a variety of different technologies along the way. I do wanna say that they technically, I guess, do give you the opportunity to go in depth if you want, since the first four homeworks are individual homeworks. This is all auto graded, which you may or may not like. And these first four homeworks expose you to a ton of different technologies. And then you have the larger group project, which essentially takes up the entire second half of the semester. And then in theory, I guess, you could really go in depth with one of your newfound technologies that you've been exposed to and become more fluent in that. But I don't know if people actually do that because I think people tend to kind of go in depth with what they already know. At least that's what we did. Um, but I do wanna say you do have the opportunity, obviously, to go in depth if you'd like. I'm not even going to cover the instructional team because in general, this class does not require a lot of synchronous interaction at all. The lectures are not really worth watching, so you don't even have to watch that. And at its core, this class is really four individual projects, which are auto-graded. And then the second half of the semester is the group project, which obviously requires some interaction with your team and that's not auto-graded. And if you have questions, you should just ask them on the online forum ed, and then the TAs are pretty responsive. So I never felt the need to get synchronous answers from a professor or from office hours, which I'm not even sure if it's offered for this class. If you're interested in taking this class, definitely check out the publicly available course website. It has pretty much all of the relevant course info, so like grading policy, schedule, rubrics um, for the project and overview of the homeworks. You are not able to see the actual homework assignment instructions since those get released uh, when you're actually enrolled in the class on a schedule, but you still get a pretty good feel for the course just reading through the course website and syllabus. There also were extra credit opportunities that I can't speak upon too much since I didn't even attempt them, but I think they're bonus quizzes where if you get questions right on the bonus quizzes, you basically just get bonus points for your grade. I didn't even attempt them because I just don't think it's necessary and I didn't even bother uh, with the time. There also was extra credit that was applied to everyone because most of the course did the course instructor opinion survey, so he gave everyone bonus points for that. So I wouldn't even really bother with the extra credit unless you think you really, really need it. Even if you bomb one of the assignments, so chances are that would be the D3JS one since that's probably the hardest one. You'll be fine though just because the group project is a majority of your grade and that is very leniently graded. Like I would say most people for the group project got an A, maybe even above a 95. So definitely don't worry about it too much if you bomb one of the assignments. I still don't think you really even need the extra credit. Jumping into the deliverables real quick. Homework one was collecting and visualizing data. So that was collecting the data via Python, get requests to an API. Visualizing data was with the tool that the professor made called Argo Lite, 
which basically just visualize his graph networks. SQLite, D3 warmup, OpenRefine. OpenRefine is an open source data cleaning tool. Homework two is the dreaded D3 assignment. Homework three basically introduces you to a number of different tools to actually work with data at scale. So it says Spark, Docker, Databricks, Cloud Services. This is definitely very breadth and not depth. So for example, with Docker, you don't do anything more than building the image and then spinning up a container with that image. Homework four was probably the least spread out or least breadth. And I feel like it was actually a pretty good introduction to something that forces you to learn the material. So it's implementing this page rank alg algorithm implementing a random forest, which if you've done machine learning for trading, you've already done before. It's just kind of a different method of representing the nodes. And scikit-learn, which if you've used scikit-learn is very, very easy. It's basically just creating different classifiers and fitting it and producing predictions. The final 50% of your grade comes from the group project. And the group project requires you work with large scale data this is obviously up for interpretation. Um, our data set honestly wasn't even that big. It was less than a gigabyte. And that made our project way, way easier just because we could work with our project and run experiments locally rather than having to use like a big data framework or something. So on top of that, you have to apply some sort of analysis or algorithm to it and then provide visualization for your results. So you can't just take a data set and then use Tableau and then call it a day without doing some sort of analysis or applying some algorithm. In our case, we used National Park Service visitation data and then applied time series modeling to predict future visitation numbers. And I actually posted the video of our presentation on my YouTube channel, so definitely check it out if you haven't. Like with anything else, having a good team definitely can make or break the experience. I was really happy with our team. We were all pretty like-minded, even though we weren't in the same time zone. So we all kind of were of the same mentality where we wanted to have something good and have it score well, but we didn't want to boil the ocean and incur a ton of extra work and a huge time commitment. On top of that, having a diverse team in terms of skill set was super helpful. So we had three people from analytics two people from CS, and that worked out super well just because in terms of the modeling side of things, I'm just clearly not as good at that kind of stuff, and I was happy to assume the role of working on the presentation since I obviously don't mind talking in front of people or in front of the camera. Wrapping up, looking at the existing reviews on OMS Central for the course, the average rating is 2.98 out of 5. I think that's actually kind of low because I was surprised by the amount that I liked the course. I would probably give it a 3.5 out of 5. The biggest drawback is definitely just how much time we spend on D3JS, which is just not that useful in my opinion. But I really liked how we got exposed to so many different technologies and I obviously liked the group project. So I wasn't really looking for deep knowledge in any of the areas that we covered. I personally did not find this class very difficult, but I definitely can see how it can be, especially if you're coming from the analytics side where you wouldn't necessarily have any JavaScript background. And if you have a Python background, you might not have it in the same object-oriented programming perspective that I do or other CS students do. So I definitely understand how the range of difficulty can vary drastically. Same for the workload, I definitely was blessed with a good team. So for me, the workload drastically fell off in the second half of the semester and I wasn't anywhere near the 16 hour per week workload that was reported on OMS Central. Those are just my thoughts and hopefully you found this review helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks. Thank you.